Let's take a look at this now. Welcome to part two. Actually, let's get all these down. Got most of them down this morning, but... Okay. I'll show you how this turned out, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with this popper. Got a lot of stuff to do. I'm going to try not to race through this this morning. Now you guys have some questions in regards to dipping, especially dipping with poppers. The basic poppers are fine. Usually if you angle them, if they don't have the gill through, um, and you angle them when they come out or turn them upside down and let that, that drip uh, come out of the mouth, you won't have as much buildup. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second when we're finished with this. But as you can see, when you angle that and hang it like that, you don't have any issues with it sitting on the top of this and sticking. And then, as you can see, there's absolutely zero residue because that drip wire took care of all of that. So it's just a matter of learning how to hang it. So I hope that I have answered that question for you guys. And I appreciate all your feedback. I do. Um, Right before I started filming this, I was looking at, uh, I get emails, so you guys find me on my website at jekyllbaits.com. I get emails through there, I get emails through Facebook Messenger, I get emails through YouTube, I get emails through just about everywhere I could possibly get emails, places I didn't even know I had email. Um, and I appreciate that, but one of the comments from yesterday's video that aired, today's Monday, this, the, uh, this, aired yesterday was uh, the my cell phone was jacking somebody up and you know what it's I just about have to turn it off at night um, but it's it's flattering as well so thank you guys for the the outpouring of support that y'all have shown me over the past couple of years as, as this channel grows I really do appreciate that and I hope that I'm able to teach you guys some stuff so let's take a look at this real quick that uh, turned out real nice you can still see that silver in the eye which is what you want You've got that yellow, a little bit of flush orange on the throat of this crappie. Turn it over. I'm really glad that we added this little side fin. You know, it's going to come to me in the middle of the night what that's called, and as a biologist, I should know these things, like right off the top of my head. I should know, or just have like a little anatomy picture, you know, I know, I know what an ear flap is, I know what the dorsal fins are, I know what the anal fins are. <sighs> lateral fin, maybe? I don't know. No, it's a lateral line. It's early, y'all. It's super early in the morning, but I'm happy with how this turned out. So there is the start to finish process on hanging, dripping, painting a crappie on a Damiki Tremor 80. Love how fat these bellies are on this bait. This is just a, a really well-weighted bait. Uh, when you swim them, it, it's nose down, so they bump like they're feeding, like they're searching for food. And when you rip them off the, the bottom in the fall, they really give a good flutter like a dying fish. So one of my, again, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite baits. You can get them in silent. You can get them in, uh, in the original knockers and multi-BBs, and they do use rattles, um, the metal BBs in there, and not plastic, which is another plus to the Damiki. So check them out one of my faves. So we're going to set this stuff off to the side. These are some shad that I have going out later on this morning. Let's talk about this popper. So a uh, couple of questions you guys have had right before we got started uh, filming this morning in regards to different types of paint. Now you guys saw me spray some pearl paint and I got an email this morning um, actually it was a, I think a question on, on this previous video that uh, I've got a, a subscriber that's just getting into airbrushing and there's so many different kinds of paints and different brands of paints and just really needs some help breaking it down and I think what I've decided to do is I'm going to do uh, an actual just a full length video on the different types of paint and the different brands that are out there because I believe it or not I use stuff that's other than the Createx and Wicked Line. I do use some Comarts and I'm really really getting into the FW from De La Rowney. Um, these and if you learn how to spray them at higher pressure and this is very highly pearlized um, if you learn how to spray these correctly these are just super fun. The only thing that I've run into and I use that 
I used, this is specifically the Dale Arani paints on these. Um, it's a very thin coating and it scratches very easily and I think that you can even see a little mistake correction right here um, where as I was putting this on my hand just touched it a little bit so you really have to be careful. Um, it, it dries very thin almost like gold flake foil when this stuff lays on the pearls anyways. So but it's the color is fantastic. You, you do have to apply a little bit heavier and a few more layers to get that color, but once you get that color in there, man, it just really shines. So impressed with the FWs. I ju it just took me a minute to learn how to use them. There's so many different types of paints out there. Um, you've got opaques, you've got fluorescence, you've got iridescence, you've got uh, transparent paints, you've got um, mediums. You know, there's paints that come out that show themselves to be illustration base and basically what that is that's for paper um, you can use them as a thin coat on these baits but they're not intended this is this is more intended for canvas work and um, like paper illustration book illustration when you're when you're doing uh, anime and different types of cartooning or whatever airbrushing you're using um, you have water-based airbrush paints you have chemical based airbrush paints. So there's just so much to just kind of break down when you're starting out. But here's the basics. There's there's basics in everything. Opaque paints. This is a white opaque. You can't see through it. So opaque is heavy. It's a heavier paint that you can't see through. Transparent paints are see-through paints. So like on this crappie here, this is all pretty much done in pearl and transparent. And when you put that up to the light, you can see through that. So that's what transparent paints do. And if you shoot pearls light enough, because there is, I don't know if it's, if it's talc in there. I don't know exactly what the uh, ingredients are that they put in, what, what kind of stuff they add in as an additive to the, the pearlized. But uh, if you shoot them thin enough, you can still get that transparent appearance, um, just like this one. This has got some, it's got some white pearl on it because we did the overspray. But yet you can still see everything clear, crystal clear coming through it. And then when you clear coat it, it's even more clear. Um, I think I saw Michael say something this morning on the Brotherhood page that transparents blend better. He's right; they do. Um, opaques are real heavy and they kind of cake together, especially if you're spraying as a base. So it's just a little bit trickier. Iridescent paints. Iridescent paints are color shifting paints by nature, which means that when you spray them, they will color shift from lighter to darker and it's more apparent the darker color you get. So if you have like an iridescent and one of, one of my favorite colors, to paint iridescent is a plum or a purple because that light shift is really really apparent on your darker colors your dark blues your blacks your purples your browns so that's a color shift and then you have fluorescence fluorescence now don't confuse glows like a uv glow or a glow folk art i have both um, with a fluorescent glow paints are meant when, uh, when light is absent in the paint, they're meant to, and it's light sensitive, if you put something like a glow paint under here and then you keep it under there for like 30 seconds, turn the light off, it's going to glow in the dark. So a lot of people use glow when they're doing uh, deeper depth pay, um, lures, if that makes any sense. If I'm just talking in circles, then you know by all means just turn me off and maybe follow in about two minutes after this. UV glow, glow in the dark, when light is absent, they'll still kind of give that glowing hue. And it's a better search bait. Darker times, cloudy days, deeper depths, um, dusk, nighttime fishing, different types of stuff like that. Fluorescence, most people use brighter color baits in stained water. Just a rule of thumb. Um, your yellows, your oranges, your reds. So. And, and it also, it's a thinner paint that's not quite opaque, but it is not quite transparent. So these paints are kind of in between a clear see-through transparent and a thick 
non-see-through opaque. So that's my little soapbox right there on the different types of paint. And then there's other stuff. We could get in the weeds with it. I could talk to you about paints all day because I love colors and I love to paint. Um, the other thing, just real briefly, Comart makes this fantastic opaque pearlescent. And it's intended to be squirted into other paints and mixed together and shot through. But I use it just as a finish sometimes by itself. You gotta shake it up real well, but I use it as a finish the very last thing that I do before I heat set the, the final time and then clear coat the bait. So this is what I think we're gonna do with this bait this morning. Since it is a top water, it's a popper. Uh, I actually got this from Scheltz. I think Predator sells, if not the exact same bait, for twice the price, they sell something very similar. And I'm sorry I said that. I do buy from Predator, but it just seems like there's so many baits that are so ridiculously close. Um, maybe they're vetted a little bit better. The only one that I know vets all of theirs and they have different stuff is this guy right here. Brian does a really good job of that over at Dinger. But let's talk about this bait for a second. So it is a proven bait. My, my pro staff loves this. It's very similar to that Pop Max. As a matter of fact, I'm certain that that's the, the mold that it was pressed from. It's got a, a couple of weights in the back. It's got another large BB here and multi metal BBs here. It's not plastic BBs. So this bait is going to sit up in the water. It's going to sit right about throat level. The head's going to come out of the water just like you'd see a Sammy or a Spook. And that's what it's intended to do. The bait walks really well. Um, the thing that it doesn't do well is clear coat. And a lot of people have some issues because you've got these slits. Uh, and if the camera's not picking that up, let me do this. This is a drip wire that I've got. And you can just, you can pretty much go all the way up through. And guess what? That's a great way to clear this when you're finished with it. And I'm going to show you that in detail, but normally what I'm doing to clear these is I'm pushing through as soon as it's wet. Once, it, you know, before, before it gets hung, we're actually taking the, uh, the drip wire or a straight drip wire and pushing through these gill slits. It's really going to help you open that bait up. But hey, we're going to stick with a frog. So I'm killing two birds with one stone again. We're going to do a red, white, and blue, and I think I'm going to kind of portray an arrow frog, a poison arrow frog on this, just to have some fun. It's been raining out, it's kind of nasty, it's cold, so let's think about summer baits and a little bit warmer weather. Man, there's so many patterns. So that's a light blue and red. There's one that I saw that I think we could probably get away with doing a couple of modifications on it. Um, it's, now see this, that's, that's my kind of frog right there. I'll open that one up in just a second. But there's one that I've seen before that really looks cool. And I really think that we would be able to, there we go. This one, what do you guys think about this one? I think this is our frog, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll do a white belly just to keep in, uh, oh yeah, I'm digging that. Yeah, yeah, or maybe instead of black, we could, we could do uh, white spots, or uh, let's play around with it. Let's create something completely different. You and I are doing this together for the first time, so frogs are not normally my specialty. I have painted them before. Um, but hey, this looks really super cool. Just save that image. Yeah, I think this is our frog, for sure. Okay, let's print it out and get started. Here it comes. I might have to paint this afterwards too. What do you guys think? Hey, if you guys think I should paint this on canvas, leave me a comment in the description below. This thing looks killer. And I think I'm gonna hit this with some more pearlized. I'd like to try and keep away from doing a completely opaque bait. I'd like to be able to see through just a little bit. bit more. Let's 
get this out of there. We are going to go ahead and heat set this. I don't want to completely heat set it. I want it to stay a little bit tacky for blending purposes. Now in tradition with patriotism, I am going to go red flag color on the red. This is more of an orange red if you can see that. Um, so we're going to go a little bit darker than that. And I actually want a little bit less pressure. I've been running about 35 on this. I'm pulling it down just under 20. And when you're trying to keep it off of a certain part of your bait, you always want to angle. And that way you won't get a whole lot of overspray, especially if you're spraying darker onto a lighter color. We're going to go ahead and paint that whole daggum thing. There we go. Got a little bit of a blend, and that's a good thing because, like I said, I still had a little bit of tackiness in that pearl white. And remember, we're not going to do that. We're not going to mimic 100%. What we are going to do is a real good heat set now that that red's on. I might add a little bit of black accent in here, just a little bit, because I like the way this black kind of covers the eyes. I think that that's real neat, and we can do that. I'm not going to cut a specific stencil for this. I, I do on some baits, but I'm not going to on, on this one. Um, just pull that off in the trash can, make sure I got all of my red out before I add the purple or the blue in so it doesn't turn purple. get that real good heat set in. I'm going to do that off camera. You guys don't need to see a bunch of heat sets, but yes. Uh, I forget who com there were, I was reading a bunch of comments this morning, so thank you guys for those. But somebody's like, oh, I see that you're heat setting in the garage now in your workshop. You must have an extension cord. I sure do. Subscriber, whichever guy you were. Um, see industrial goes right into that. I've got a separate power source for the washer and dryer in the laundry room. So we're big time and now y'all. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that we could go with this. We could do just a straight blue spots on this and go all the way around. Um, or I could kind of mix in some pearlized paint with this. What I'm noticing on the way that this is structured is the black, which we're actually going to use representing blue today, and our blue is going to be the white base because we're doing patriotic and not the exact. We're going to, we're going to try and match the pattern as close as we can, just not the colors. Um, but the, uh, the blue is solid and it looks like there's a little bit of shimmer and spot in this background. So I'm almost even wondering if I should random splatter this, this white, with another color. Um, maybe, what would I do? Maybe black there? Let's let's see how that let's see how that works out. Because there is a little bit, I don't know if the camera really picks this up, but you can see there's like a little bit of marbleization. Like this is just the coolest skin pattern on a frog ever, I think. I could see why somebody would want to keep reptiles. I've had snakes before. I, I had a female ball python that I loved dearly. I ended up giving her away because I just didn't have the time to keep her, but she was so sweet, very protective. Um, but most most of these things, and, and I had, a, I've had a saltwater tank, I've had a freshwater tank, uh, loved aquariums, but eh, these days they belong in the wild and I really don't have the time to take care of them. So there you have it. I think I'm gonna black splatter this. So what we're gonna do, just pull a random scrap piece of paper out here so I don't waste a mixing cup. Get this gunk out of here. There's always gunk. You're hearing live streaming from WXPN from our nation's first 
capital, not our current capital, Philadelphia. Most of y'all know that I'm an East Coast girl, Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, Penn State girl. There we go. And let's just, I really need small on this, so try and keep it off of the red. And just hit this with just a little bit of random splatter. Doesn't have to be exact any more than it has to be specific in any area other than I don't want to get it on the red. And I want to try and keep these dots relatively small. Yes, folks, I do know that I can use the airbrush to do pretty much the same effect here. But it just seems so messy. You gotta take the head off of the airbrush and I'm just used to doing this because I'm a canvas painter by heart anyways, long before I ever picked up an airbrush. But you still want to be able to see all of the white in this background. So that's a good thing about these helping hands. And the description for that uh, below, I do have the link for the helping hands. a little bit on the belly, not quite as much. But you can pretty much turn these things around. So all I'm doing here is reversing some color patterns. We're going to use the same specific, but because I was asked to do somewhat of a patriotic bait, um, we're, instead of the black and blue, we're going to do white as a backdrop to dark blue. I'm using a Wicked Deep Blue color 8 on this. And one of the other things that I always kind of preach to you guys about doing is that before you ever lay a pattern down on your lure, see what it looks like first. Now we can see in this pattern that it is almost a mimic to what I can do with this stencil. This is an art tool stencil. There's always a leak in, link in every video that I shoot. I mean, first of all, we want to make sure the pressure is right. And I would have to say that that is a pretty good match, folks. That's what it's going to look like. You can see that there's overspray. So you want to make sure that you have a real low pressure when you're doing this because we want to be able to see that white underneath. We don't want a whole bunch of blue messing up our white. So because this is a round bait, I'm going to use this thin piece to the best of my ability here and just kind of work it in little segments around this bait. And there we go. Not going to take long for it to take shape, but just like yesterday in this crappie video, anytime you're stenciling, you want to dab off the excess. You know, I seriously have not had the coffee that I had yesterday morning, so if my speech uh, seems a little bit impaired, I'm just sleepy. There we go. I'm actually going to pull the pressure down a little bit. I can notice a little bit of blow. It's kind of moving around a little bit on the bait, and we don't want that to happen. And then in each specific segment that I'm working, I'm going to try and finish that line on this so I don't get in the weeds here with overspray. dab that off. Now I do have, I don't want to show the exact same pattern all over the bait, so we're going to mix it up just a little bit. I think on the back I'm going to do some bigger stuff because if you notice on this photo that we're referencing here, there's some bigger bubbles and areas 
on the frog's back. So, and I, I just, oh, I hate using gloves. I was pulling clear coat off this morning from the baits that I sprayed and hung yesterday. And uh, I always use gloves for that because I don't uh, want to get the oils from my skin transferred onto uh, the lure. I want those customers to have a nice clean lure when they get it to their house. And then they can do whatever they want to it. But I try and give them the cleanest, best looking product that I can. I strongly recommend that you guys do that as well. The cool thing about using these stencils is they're super easy to bend and you you kind of, it's difficult with plastic. Plastic has a memory, so it kind of snaps back. So when you're using those plastic stencils, unless you're on a flat bait, it's real hard to curve it. That's one of the reasons that I really like art tools and uh, cutting my own from cardboard because if for no other reason, it has very little memory and you can kind of curve it around anything. And then if you want to put it like under something heavy, it'll straighten it back out. There we go, that's better. It's like, why isn't that coming out? So very quickly we're getting those poison arrow frog bubble patterns from its legs onto the back of this bait. And it's again, stenciling, it just takes a little bit of patience and you have to hold the stencil steady unless you're using a hard uh, preform stencil that closes around the whole bait. But if you don't have those and you have things like this, you just have to remember to be very slow and methodical and patient. And keep that stencil in one place because that's that'll mess up your pattern more than anything else will is sliding that stencil over wet paint. That's why yesterday I kind of try to profess to you guys to not overspray a whole bunch over whatever you've just painted because that paint's still going to be wet. And if, if you just practice a little bit, you guys will be able to move that around and, and have some accuracy with your hands without sliding it. What are we going to do for the belly, you guys ask? No problemo, muchacha. Just have to have a steady hand. I am going to heat set this and come right back and then we're going to kind of move this off of here and do the belly. Heat set this and then flipped it um, upside down, which you can you can do. You just have to be careful not to scratch what you've already painted. But now we've got instead of these two eye hooks, we've got these two that we're using. So it makes it a little bit easier to flip this over on the belly and get a new line of accent paint down. This looks like a pretty cool segment just kind of form that and the this the art tools is real easy to form it's a little pricey um, but there's just so many choices and y'all need to be checking out Corey Van Vonderen and Russ Allen at Insane Custom Stencils as well um, they also do some pretty killer stencils I just happen to preach art tools because it's what I happen to have. And I really like to cut my own as well.
That's kind of neat. I'll use that if I can. Yeah, fits pretty well right there. I want to kind of do like one more here. Because there is a good bit of blue on this bait. All right, it's pretty decent. Got that all the way around. You can still see the white. Now let's get those eyes in there. These are just kind of some random splotches as well. I'm not going to use these bubbles. I think for that I'm going to use a different stencil. Just pull this over. I don't know if that's the exact one that I want though. Let me see what I've got here. Got little pieces, parts of stencils that I've been using over a period of time and some of these might do the trick and I am going to use black for that so let's pull the rest of the blue out of here there we go I don't think I can find what I'm looking for there I'll throw a little black in there Bring that back down to about eight or ten. Don't want too much. I don't know where these ants are coming from. I mean, it's been raining so long, they're probably just trying to get in here where it's dry, but doesn't mean that I want them hanging out while I'm shooting a video. Let's see. I want something that's. Let's try that. Looks pretty good. What do y'all guys think? Dab this off because you're going to be using the reverse side for the other side. You want to match those eyes. Got a little reggae going on here. Seriously? There we go. do one more. Just a couple of blotches because it looks cool. Just got to find the right blotch. And angle it the right way. That's always my decision making process is which way should I angle this. I think I'm going to stick with this. This one right here. Just kind of throw that down. Yeah, man, that's getting cool and groovy. Looks like there are some on the nose here, so we'll just continue on with this train of thought. I'm going to pull this off. Maybe have just a little bit more coming off of this. this segment here. A 
There we go. I think we are pretty much ready to rock and roll. Do just a little bit more detail up on this eye. Not 100% happy with it. There we go. One more little piece right here. Good deal. Okay. So we have reversed some colors around, but ultimately we have a poison arrow frog pattern in red, white, and blue with some accent here. I think that's a fairly decent match. We've swapped out our orange for red. We've swapped out our black for blue, and we're using our base instead of the blue, we're using white. So I am probably going to do just a couple more little bits of detail in this. Maybe something on the uh, opposite side, because we don't have a whole lot on, uh, on the back side of this. It wouldn't hurt just to stay consistent and add one more spot, I think, or just a couple. Let's see here. There we go. Get this bottom lip. And done. Got the eyes on, got the signature. Let's get this in some clear coat. Revolution in the air. Sing it, Bob. All right, let's see here. Got a drip wire. Somebody else was asking me this morning. There's a lot of questions this morning from yesterday's spray session, which that's awesome. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Um, somebody was asking if I reuse these things. I sure do. Um, I start out with a longer piece, and then I'll either cut it down, or if it's not a whole bunch, you can just kind of peel off a little bit of residue from the epoxy. Um, and then I usually try and use the same side for putting it through the eyelets. And then after a while, eventually, it kind of gets shorter or you run out of clean area to work with. And then I'll just snip off one side and then use this side as a drip wire. So yeah, it's multiple use most of the time. Unless it really gets gunked up. And I think we're also, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing as we did yesterday. I'm going to clear coat over here. I normally clear coat over there, but it's not really as good of a light source. So we'll just, it's almost time to get a new one. Keep checking these because what you'll find is another little KBS tip. If you guys are KBS users out there and not Teuton or Alumalite, you'll find that this goes through. It'll, you're turning on and twisting will actually wear and tear on this. So I think after the, this video is done, I'm going to put some new saran wrap in here. But for the meantime, um, let's use this longer drip wire. I'm going to drip this down, or dip this down rather, not drip it. Again, the coffee is just not kicking in with me this morning. I apologize for that. And then bring it right back out. And then, let's see if you guys can see this. Let me turn this this way. Now you might get a little bit messy. You might want to wear gloves for this. But I put my little drip wire tail right down through those gills. Okay, and I do that a couple of times while the bait is still hanging in this jar. And just get that down as much as I can so that it doesn't clog. And if you do that, just that little extra step right there. Okay, and then instead of trying to rehang it, just run this side of your drip wire through. And pop it in there. And you shouldn't get too much. As a matter of fact, I didn't. Eh, I got a little bit on my hands, but not bad. And then we're just going to hang this. So that's it. 
and don't don't leave your uh, don't leave it in there for a long time that's another tip don't really sink this under and leave it don't hold it down is what I'm trying to say I'm gonna get some coffee we'll come right back okie doke it's always good to change this out every once in a while yes I got coffee I, it, it's like I'm talking with marbles in my mouth today folks I, I apologize for that I'm usually a little bit more on my game when I'm shooting these videos there goes that it's like it's been silent the whole video that's awesome <laughs> can't have it all can I so we're just gonna fold this over and then what I normally do is once it's just kind of press that out it doesn't have to be specific because this is kind of form fitting and we're going to fold it one more time over get as many of the air bubbles out as you can and if you flatten that out this will usually last for well, a week or so and then i switch it out but it's uh i was due for some some new stuff here okay there we go just get that real tight seal on it and as this goes down then i'll i'll spritz some uh bloxygen or that uh, and when I talk about dust remover I'm talking about this stuff right here ultra duster and it may not be carbon dioxide um, what is in this does it even tell you what's in it nope I think it's carbon dioxide same stuff that's in uh, ready whip whippets no, I don't do whippets. But I've heard that they're fun. That's it, folks. We've got a frog. And I hope I've been able to help you guys out this morning, teach you guys a little bit about how I clear coat those gill through water flow technology poppers. If you guys have any questions, leave them for me below. We talked a little bit about the differences between transparency, fluorescence, opaques and iridescent paint so there's there's a pearlized there's a whole lot out there folks um, just take your time with it you don't have to go crazy and get a lot of paints at once uh, wicked has a sale by the way though so they are on sale and i will leave you a link in the description below for that as well you guys have a great rest of your week we'll see you on the uh, workshop update that's coming out tomorrow have fun happy casting from jekyll bates